Man has always attempted to shape the environment to his comfort, and no place is this more true than the Netherlands. 17% of mainland Netherlands is artificial and constructed by the Dutch themselves through a mixture of canals, levees, pumping systems and a lot of dirt. Most of this enlargement has been done in the past 100 years, but those windmill spinning, tulip growing, wooden shoe wearing Dutch have been installing nationwide expansion packs for as far back as the 1300s. How the hell did they do it? How did they manage to build an area more than twice the size of Hong Kong and make it fit for human habitation? To ask the how, we must first ask the why. Why spend millions of euros building more land when you can just do what the rest of Europe did and simply steal it? Ultimately, it comes down to the weather. Really. A low-lying coastal state with heavy rains is prone to flooding, the kind that kills thousands of people. A lot of the flooding came from this area, the Zuiderzee, when heavy rainfall and rising sea levels frequently caused it to spill over. The flat terrain of the low countries means that water can go for miles before being stopped, and for this reason the Netherlands is a country of canals, which line the cities and carries the water out to sea. While local governments had been constructing minor dams here and there, filling in lakes and rivers for centuries, it wasn't until 1916 when the Dutch realised they needed to build or die. Due to the First World War, food imports were scarce and this was made worse by a large flood destroying vast swathes of farmland. Several provinces went bankrupt trying to mitigate the damage, and the Netherlands was looming close to famine. So, in 1920, the Dutch Parliament approved the Zuiderzeewerken, a programme proposed by engineer-turned-politician Cornelis Lely. His idea was to dam up the entrance to the Zuiderzee and put the inner lake to good economic use. The plan costed 200 million guilders, or 285 billion euros today. It constructed the largest dam in European history, shifting 23 million cubic metres of soil. The dam, called the Afsluit Dyke, is 32 kilometres long, 7.25 metres above sea level, and is used as a bridge to easily get from North Holland to Friesland. There's also a statue of Lely in the middle, and what looks like a caravan park on one of the islands? I don't know for sure, I can't read Dutch. So how did they do it? While you may think that they just dump vast amounts of dirt into the ocean until it... What, Wait, that, that's actually what they did? The Dutch, more or less, did just dump ton after ton of dirt and rocks into the ocean, topping it off with soft clay and grass to keep it all in place. This wasn't done all at once, mind you, as the Dutch first practiced with smaller distances before building islands along the way as midpoints and joining them up as they went. Then, pumping stations would be constructed to simply throw the water from one side of the dam to the other. Unlike every other public works project, the dam was completed two years ahead of schedule on May 28, 1932. The Zuiderzee, which was now a lake, was renamed to the Isomir after the river Isel that flows into it. And gradually, as the salt water was pumped out and replaced by fresh water from the river, the lake became clean, fresh water. Most Dutch drinking water today comes from this massive lake. With this brand new lake of 1800 square kilometres, the Dutch had free reign to do whatever they wanted with it. Critically, they had to make back all the money they spent building the dam. So in 1927, the Dutch built another dam around an area called the Veringemeer, and then draining off the water to create new land. This made room for villages, farms and industry, which would grow GDP and the economy. The next polder, as they're called, was Nordostpolder, which was going well until the Nazis arrived in 1940. While work was expected to stop, the inquisitive Germans allowed it to continue as they had plans to building their own polders in Germany and wanted to see how they worked. Interestingly, this project connected the densely populated island of Urk to the rest of the mainland and the conservative island with its own dialect was forced to mingle with the rest of the Dutch population. When the polder was completed after the war, scientists found that a lot of the former coastline areas were affected by a lack of water, and many farmers suffered as a result of poor crop yields. So with that lesson learned, when it came to make the next polder in 1957, the Flevoland polder was built as an island, 
with a small river flowing past the original coastline to preserve Gelderland's access to the sea. Flevoland was built in two parts, north and south. The northern, or eastern part, was built first, followed by a short break, and then continued with the southern half. Due to mass flooding and poverty in the rural region of Zeeland, many farmers from the region moved up to Flevoland beginning a new life, kick-starting the polders' local economy. Furthermore, a housing shortage in Amsterdam forced many of the people to move further away from the city, and many Dutch people found Flevoland as the perfect place to move to. They named their new city Leelstad, after the man who the islanders owe their homeland to. In 1986, Flevoland was combined with Nordospolster to create Greater Flevoland, and was officially accepted as the 12th province of the Netherlands. Today it is home to over 420,000 people, and has enough farmland to make the tiny Netherlands the second largest exporter of food in the world, behind only the USA. Flevoland is the largest artificial island in the world. And then they built one more dam across the lake, just in case. But this isn't the only massive infrastructure project that the Dutch have spent millions of guilders on. In 1953, after a horrific flood in the rural Zeeland province that killed over a thousand people, the Dutch government set about building the Delta Works just 20 days later. The plan boarded up four of the largest openings to the estuaries in some of the largest barriers ever conceived. Each fortification is over 40 metres wide, and can withstand storm surges up to 5 metres higher than average, which seems low, but is actually the height of your average two-storey house. Ultimately, these structures are set to survive 2,000 years, given proper maintenance, and they are even designed with ecological concerns in mind. At the cost of millions more guilders, the Dutch government allowed one of these barriers to have a gate, to let in salt water and ensure the many plants and animals of the region aren't disrupted. In less than 70 years, the Dutch have almost completely immunised themselves from flooding and created bountiful wealth for their citizens in the process. I am not exaggerating when I say this is one of the greatest achievements in human history, and the experts agree. The American Society of Civil Engineers declared this dam system to be one of the seven engineering wonders of the modern world. But the plans for more expansion didn't end there. There's no shortage of proposed ideas for where to build in the future, with the next province of Markovaden having begun construction in 2016. Due to the Isomir Bay being cut off from the ocean by the Zauderzeewerken dam system, many of the local ESO system has suffered as a result, through lack of regular tides and ocean salt water. By constructing many islands, shorelines, bays and lagoons, ecologists hope to foster new, diverse ecosystems to make up for the disruption caused by previous development works. The Netherlands will continue to grow, building her way into prosperity as the population live, work, study and play in absolute safety, well below sea level. Maybe one day the Dutch will stop their quest to expand their shores, but for now, the people of the Netherlands will continue making the Netherlands. <laughs>